Huainanzi Part 9. The ruler's techniques consist of establishing non-active management and carrying out wordless instructions. Quiet and tranquil, he does not move, by even one degree he does not waver, adaptive and compliant, he relies on his underlings, dutiful and accomplished, he does not labor. Therefore, though his mind knows the norms, his savants transmit the discourses of the way, though his mouth can speak, his entourage proclaims his words, though his feet can advance, his master of ceremonies leads, though his ears can hear, his officials offer their admonitions. One therefore, his considerations are without mistaken schemes, his undertakings are without erroneous content. His words are taken as scripture and verse, his conduct is taken as a model and nomon for the world. His advancing and withdrawing respond to the seasons, his movement and rest comply with proper patterns. His likes and dislikes are not based on ugliness or beauty, his rewards and punishments are not based on happiness or anger. Each name names itself, each category categorizes itself. Affairs emerge from what is natural, nothing issues from the ruler himself. Thus kings in antiquity wore caps with strings of pearls in front so as to mask their vision and silk plugs in their ears so as to obstruct their hearing. The son of heaven surrounded himself with screens so as to isolate himself. Thus, what the ruler patterns himself on is far away, but what he grounds himself in is nearby, what he governs himself with is great, but what he preserves is small. Now, if his eyes looked recklessly, there would be profligacy, if his ear listened recklessly, there would be delusion, if his mouth spoke recklessly, there would be disorder. One cannot fail to guard carefully these three gateways. If you wish to regulate them, that is in fact to distance yourself from them, if you wish to embellish them, that is in fact to injure them. 9-67-311-9.2 Heavenly Chi becomes your ethereal soul, earthly Chi becomes your substantive soul. To return them to their mysterious dwelling place, so that each resides in its proper place. Preserve and do not lose them, so that above you communicate with the Grand One, for the essence of the Grand One communicates with heaven, and the way of heaven is mysterious and silent, shapeless, and without pattern. Heaven's limit cannot be reached, its depths cannot be plumbed. Still it transforms together with humans, though knowledge cannot grasp it. 9 slash 67 slash 13, 15 9.3 In ancient times, when the divine farmer ruled the world, his spirit did not launch forth from his chest, his wisdom did not go beyond the four sides of his body. He cherished his humane and sincere heart. Sweet rains fell in their season, the five grains multiplied and prospered. In the spring there was birth, in summer growth, in the fall, harvest, in the winter, storage. He inquired monthly and investigated seasonally, when the harvest ended, he reported the achievements to the ancestors. Each season he tasted the grain offerings and sacrifice to the ancestors in the Ming Tang. The construction of the Ming Tang was such that it had a roof but no sides. Wind and rain could not assail it, cold and heat could not harm it. Slowly and haltingly the ruler entered the hall. He nurtured the people with public spiritedness, the people in turn were simple and steady, straight, and sincere. They did not engage in angry struggle, but goods were sufficient. They did not strain their bodies, but they completed their accomplishments. They availed themselves of the gifts of heaven and earth and lived in harmony and unity with them. Therefore, his awesome demeanor was stern but not exercised, his punishments existed but were not used, his laws were sparing and uncomplicated. Thus the divine farmer's transformation of the people was spirit-like. His territory to the south went as far as Jiazai and in the north to the Yudu Mountains. Three to the east it stretched to Sunrise Valley, and to the west it reached to Three Dangers Mountain. There was none who failed to follow him. At that time the law was generous and punishments were lenient, prisons and jails were vacant and empty. Throughout the world, customs were one, and none harbored wickedness in their hearts. 9 slash 67 slash 17, 23 government in the era of decline was not like that. 
Those above loved to seize and knew no limit, those below were as rapacious as wolves and would not yield. The people, impoverished and suffering, struggled angrily, affairs exhausted their energy without achieving anything. Cleverness and deceit sprouted forth, theft and plunder flourished openly. Those above and those below resented each other, laws and commands had no currency. Officials had authority but did not take responsibility for returning to the way, instead, they went against the root and embellished the branches. They diminished and decreased rewards and strengthened and increased punishments, hoping in this way to govern well. This is no different from grasping a crossbow and calling a bird or wielding a club and approaching a dog for the disorder will only increase. 9-68-1-49.4 When waters are muddy, fish gasp for air near the surface, 5 When the government is harsh, the people become disorderly. Thus those who raise tigers, leopards, rhinoceroses, and elephants give them pens and cages, provide for their desires, feed them appropriately, yet the animals still harbor great anger and cannot live out their normal lifespans because they live under compulsion. Thus it is that when those above have many clever schemes, those below have much deceitfulness. When those above have many matters to deal with, those below have many fabrications. When those above are troubled and vexed, those below are unsettled. When those above have many wants, those below struggle harder against one another. Failing to correct the root but attending to the branches is like spreading dirt to stop a dust storm or bringing firewood to put out a fire. 9 68 4, 8 Thus with sages, their undertakings are sparing and thus easily managed, their desires are few and thus easily satisfied. They do not give but are humane, they do not speak but are trustworthy. They do not seek but they attain, they do not act but they succeed. Claude like, 6 They preserve genuineness, embrace potency, and project sincerity. The world follows them as an echo response to a sound or a shadow imitates the form that casts it, for what they cultivate is the root. Punishments and chastisements are not enough to modify habits, executions and mutilations are not enough to proscribe wickedness. Only spirit transformation is to be prized. Essence at its utmost is spirit. 9 68 10, 12 A great shout can be heard at most only within a hundred paces, but the human will can project over a thousand li. Winter's sunshine, summer's shade everyone seeks them, but no one makes them so. Thus the semblance of utmost essence is not called forth but comes of itself, is not waved off but departs of itself. It is obscure and dark, we do not know who made it. Its achievements accomplish themselves. The wise cannot discourse about it, the analytical cannot describe it, 9 68 14, 16 9.5 Long ago, Sun Chueo 7 slept peacefully, and the men of Ying had no occasion to use their weapons. Yuliao of Xinan juggled crossbow pellets, and although the two houses i.e., those of Duke Bo and Zixi had difficulties, none could take issue with Yuliao's refusal. 8 Armor of leather and metal belligerent stares and clenched fists how inadequate these are as a defense against weapons and swords, scrolls of treaties, rolls of silk, mutilating punishments, and executioner's axes how meager these are as ways to get out of difficulties. To rely on the eyes alone to see or to depend on words alone to command it is hard to rule that way. 9-68-16, 19 When Chu Boy was prime minister, Zigong 9 went to see him and asked, how do you govern a country? He answered, I govern it by not governing. Viscount Jian of Zhao, 10 wanting to attack Wei, sent scribe and 11 to look things over. He came back and reported, saying, Chu Boyu is prime minister. We cannot send in troops yet. How could strong fortifications and precipitous defile be as effective as men like these? Thus, Gao Yao, 12 who was mute, served as minister of justice, and there were no cruel punishments in the world. He had qualities of greater value than speech. Music master Kuang, who was blind, served as grand tutor, and Jin had no disorder in government. He had qualities more valuable than sight. Thus, 
the commands that do not rely on words, and the vision that does not rely on seeing, are what make Fuxi and the Divine Farmer our teachers. 9 slash 68 slash 21, 25 9.6 The transformation of the people comes not from what the ruler says but from he does. Thus, Duke Zhuang of Qi 13 was fond of bravado and would not allow anyone to argue with him about fighting. So his state had many difficulties, and its decline led to the rebellion of Kuizu. King Qingxiang of Chu 14 liked sex and did not allow anyone to discuss his habits with him. So many of the people fell into disorder, culminating in the affair of Zhao Qi. 15 Thus the movements of the utmost essence are like the generative power of springtime Qi and the slaying power of autumn Qi. Not even a relay carriage or a galloping horse could go that far. Thus a ruler of men is like an archer. When he releases an arrow if his aim is slightly off, it will always miss the target by a wide margin. Thus the ruler is very careful in how he evokes a response. 9 slash 68 slash 25, 9 slash 69 slash 29.7 Rong Kichi 16 plucked his chin just once, and Confucius was joyful for three days in response to its harmony. Zhou Ji 17 played one note on his chin, and King Wei of Qi 18 was mournful all evening in response to its sadness. By playing on the chin and the se and giving form to the notes, one can make others sad or joyful. By proclaiming laws and establishing rewards, however, one cannot modify habits and change customs, because sincerity of heart would not be stirred. 19 When Ning Qi 20 sang a song in the Shang mode from under the card, 21 Duke Huan of Qi sighed and suddenly understood and appointed him a high official. How deeply the utmost essence enters into humans. Thus it is said, if you hear the sound of music, you know the customs of the place from which it arises, if you see the customs, you know their transformations. Confucius studied music under Master Xiang 22 and thereby understood the will of King Wen of Zhou. This was because upon seeing subtleties, he could know the obvious. Jitsi of Yanling, hearing the music of Lu, knew the customs of the Shang and Xia dynasties. From assessing the close at hand, he recognized the distant. What was created in highest antiquity and disseminated a thousand years ago has not been extinguished. This is emphatically so in the case of what transforms the people in the present era. 9 slash 69 slash 4, 9 9.8 During the reign of King Tang of the Shang dynasty, there was a seven year drought. 23 The king offered himself as sacrifice at Mulberry Forest. Thereupon clouds from the four seas gathered, and rain fell for a thousand li. Embracing his basic substance and imparting his sincerity, he evoked a response from heaven and earth, his spirit making itself known beyond the four quarters. How could promulgating orders and prohibitions suffice to accomplish something like this? In ancient times, the utmost essence of the sage kings took form within themselves, and their personal likes and dislikes were forgotten outside themselves. They spoke simply to express their emotions, issued orders to make clear their intentions, displayed their essential qualities in rites and music, and exemplified them in songs and ballads. Their achievements have spread to a myriad generations without being impeded and have pervaded the four directions without being depleted. Even birds, beasts, and insects were refined and transformed twenty-four by them. How much more so were they effective in maintaining laws and carrying out commands? 9 slash 69 slash 11, 15 thus, the loftiest of rulers transforms by means of his spirit. The next lower ruler convinces the people to act without transgressions. The next lower one rewards the worthy and punishes the unruly. 9 slash 69 slash 17 9.9 the balance beam, in regard to left and right, is unbiased in its weighing, and thus it can be level. The marking cord, in regard to inside and outside, is unbiased about the crooked and the straight, and thus it can be true. The ruler, in regard to law, is unbiased in his likes and dislikes, and thus he can promulgate commands. The steel yard, in weighing the light and the heavy, is not off by even the weight of the head of a mosquito. The stretched string, in straightening the crooked, makes no mistake even as small as the tip of a needle. 
the ruler, in rectifying the deviant, is without personal bias. Wickedness cannot distort him, slander cannot disorder him. When potency has no place to stand, and hatred is not stored away, this is to employ the techniques of rulership and dispense with the human mind. Therefore the wisdom of the one who rules does not enter into it. 9 slash 69 slash 17 29.10 now, for boats to float on water and carts to go on land is their natural propensity. If a carriage hits a tree and breaks an axle, or if a boat runs aground and shatters the hull, there is no reason for people to bear resentment against the tree or the rock, they will blame the lack of skill of the carriage driver or the boatman. They know that trees and stones possess no conscious qualities. Thus when the way includes wisdom, there is confusion, when potency includes the mind, there is danger, when the mind includes the eyes, there is bedazzlement. No weapon is more powerful than awareness and the will. Even the great sword Moy is inferior to them. 25 No brigand is as strong as yin and yang. The drumsticks and drum signaling attack are inferior to them. Now the weight and the balance beam, the compass and the square, once fixed do not change. Their calibrations are not altered for the sake of Qin or Chu, their form does not change for the Hu or the Yu tribes. Constant and unswerving, going straight and not meandering, taking form in a single day and passed down for 10,000 generations, they act through non-action. Thus, states have rulers who perish, but no era can see the destruction of the way. People have distress and poverty, but principles never fail to be passed on. From this standpoint, non-action is the ancestor of the way. Attaining the ancestor of the way, one responds to things without limit. When one relies merely on human talents, the highest kind of statecraft is difficult. 9 slash 69 slash 22, 27 9.11 King Tang of Shang and King Wu of Zhou were sage rulers but could not equal the people of Yu in managing small craft and staying afloat on rivers and lakes. 26 Yu Yin was a worthy prime minister, but he could not equal the Hu people in mounting fine steeds or taming wild northern horses. Confucius and Matsi were erudite but could not equal the mountain dwelling people in navigating dense undergrowth or traversing dangerous passes. From this perspective, human knowledge, in relation to things, is shallow. Desiring to illuminate all within the seas and preserve the ten thousand places, if the ruler does not accord with the norms of the patterns of the way but relies on his own ability instead, then he will not reach his goal. Thus wisdom is not sufficient to rule the world. The tyrant G's strength could break an ox's horn, straighten an iron hook, twist strands of iron together, and fuse metals. His men Qin Yi and De Shi 27 in the water could kill the giant Yuan turtle and the crocodile and, on land, could catch the common bear and the brown bear. 28 Nevertheless, Tang, with only 300 armored chariots, surrounded Ji's forces at Mingtiao and captured them at the Nanjiao Gate. From this perspective, strength 29 is not sufficient to control the world, wisdom is not sufficient to rule, bravery is not sufficient to be strong. Thus, that human talents are not enough to do the job is obvious. A ruler of men need not descend from his palace halls to know about matters beyond the four seas because he avails himself of things to know about things, he avails himself of people to know about people. Where collective strength is employed, it is always victorious, where collective wisdom is employed, it is always successful. A tube well does not house giant turtles or crocodiles, it is too narrow. An ordinary courtyard does not contain giant trees, it is too small. 30 Now when it comes to lifting a heavy ding vessel, a person with meager strength will not be able to do it. As to picking it up and transporting it, one need not wait for someone who is stronger. 31 Thus a village of a thousand people has no broken rafters, and a population of 10,000 has no project they cannot carry out. 9 slash 70 slash 1 11 9.12 Now the horses Hualiu and Lua 32 could go a thousand li in a day, but if we made them chase a rabbit, they would not be comparable to a wolf or a dog. This is because their skills and abilities have limits. 
An owl at night can grab a flea or a mosquito and can distinguish the tip of an autumn hair, but in daylight the focus of its eyes cannot discern hills and mountains. Its form and nature are at odds with each other. Now, the ten snake floats in the fog and soars, the ying dragon rides on the clouds and ascends. When an ape gets in a tree, it jumps with agility, when a fish gets in water, it swims quickly. Thus in ancient times when they made a carriage, the one who painted its surface did not draw designs on it, and the one who drilled holes did not carve designs. Workers did not have two different skills, scholars did not hold two positions, each stuck to his profession and did not interfere with others. Each person obtained what was suitable to him, each thing obtained what gave it security. Hence, tools and utensils were not cumbersome, duties and tasks were not despised. When debts are small, they are easy to repay, when duties are few, they are easy to sustain, when responsibilities are light, they are easy to fulfill. When those above reduce the workload, those below find it easy to do it successfully. In this way, the ruler and his ministers work closely together for a long time without imposing on each other. 9 slash 70 slash 13, 18 9.13 The way of one who governs people is like that of the corpse impersonator in the sacrificial rite of the Ling Star. 33 Austere, mysterious, and silent, he auspiciously and happily receives the blessing. He who has attained the way does not try to embellish what is ugly or make good what is false. He is like a cloak that if worn by one person is not too large and if by ten thousand is not too small. If the ruler gravely implements generosity and gravely implements severity, then the way of ruling will come through. Generosity means to emphasize the awarding of largesse. When those without merit are richly rewarded and those who do not work hard receive high rank, those attending to their duties will grow lax, and those who roam about seeking official position will press to advance their situations. Severity means to punish recklessly. When those who are innocent are put to death and those who act honestly are punished, then those who cultivate their persons will not encourage goodness, and the wicked will look lightly on defying their superiors. Thus acting generously gives birth to licentiousness, and acting severely gives birth to disorder. Customs of licentiousness and disorder are habits of a perishing state. 9 slash 70 slash 20, 25 Thus in the governance of an enlightened ruler, when the state implements punishments, there is no place for the ruler's anger. When the court bestows rewards, there is no place for the ruler's involvement. One who is punished does not resent the ruler, for the punishment suits the offense. One who is rewarded does not feel gratitude toward the ruler, for the reward has been earned by merit. In such a state the people understand that rewards and punishments all come from themselves. Thus they perform their duties and serve their callings, not feeling that they should receive special tribute from their ruler. Thus the court is full of weeds and devoid of footprints, farmers' fields are well tilled and devoid of weeds. Of a great ruler, those below know only that he exists. 34 9 slash 70 slash 27, 9 slash 71 slash 19.14 The axle tree of a swapi is planted upright and does not move, but in tipping up and down, the balance arm is constrained by it. The ruler is tranquil and calm and does not become agitated, but the hundred officials obtain their compliance from him. It is like the soldier who carries the battle flag, if he points it the wrong way, there will be disorder. Cleverness does not suffice to bring great peace, wisdom does not suffice to dispel danger. Praising Yao and disparaging Ji is not as good as casting aside intelligence and cultivating the way. If the ruler is pure, tranquil, and non-active, 35 heaven will provide the seasons for him. If the ruler is honest, frugal, and keeps to moderation, earth will yield its wealth for him. If he empties out his intelligence yet accords with potency, the sage will make a course of action for himself. Thus, to the one who is low, the myriad things revert, to the one who is empty, the world gives what it has. 9 slash 71 slash 1, 5 in this way, 36 the ruler begins by displaying his propriety, establishing it as the foundation. 
thus using the natural propensity of the people as his carriage and the wisdom of the people as his horse, though traversing dark wastelands and perilous defile, still no confusion can arise. Because the ruler dwells in a deeply secluded place, avoiding scorching heat and damp cold and because he makes layers of doors to separate the gate from his inner rooms, he is prepared against evil men and deceivers. Inside his state, he knows nothing of the situation in village houses or gates, outside it, he knows nothing of the forms of mountains and marshes. Even outside the curtains, the eye cannot see beyond ten li, and the ear cannot hear more than a hundred paces away. Nevertheless, there is nothing in the world that the ruler does not perceive because his sources of information are rich and those who draw from him are many. Thus, without going out his door, he knows the world, and without glancing out his window, he knows the way of heaven. 37 If he relies on the wisdom of the people, the whole world will not suffice to contain it, if he relies on his own mind alone, he will not be able to protect even himself. 9 slash 71 slash 7, 13 Thus the ruler covers the world with his potency. He does not act on the basis of his own wisdom but follows what will bring benefit to the myriad common people. Just raising his heel is enough to bring benefit to the people. Hence, though he places himself on top of the people, they do not find him heavy, 38 Though he situates himself in front of the people, they do not find him injurious. Though they elevate him, they do not feel he is too lofty, though they support him, they do not tire of him. 9 slash 71 slash 15, 17 9.15 The way of the ruler is round, revolving and turning endlessly, transforming and sustaining, like a spirit, vacant, gliding without apparent purpose, always at the rear and never taking the lead. The way of the official is square, discussing practicalities and being in the right place. In accomplishing tasks, he is the first to take the lead. Guarding his store of knowledge and parceling out his insight, he thereby establishes his success. Therefore, when the ruler and his officials follow different ways, there is order. When they follow identical ways, there is disorder. When each obtains what is appropriate to him and situates himself in his proper place, above and below can work with each other. 39 9-71-17, 29.16 In listening to affairs of government the ruler is empty of mind and soft of will, clear, bright, and unclouded. Thus the many officials work with him like the spokes of a will and advance in unison. Whether foolish or wise, worthy or unsatisfactory, none fails to use his abilities to the fullest extent. In this way, the ruler obtains the means to control his ministers, and they obtain the means to serve their ruler, so the way of ruling the state is clear. King Wen of Zhou was wise. He also was fond of soliciting opinions. Thus he was a sage. King Wu was brave. He also was fond of soliciting opinions. Thus he was victorious. If one uses the knowledge of many people, there is nothing that cannot be undertaken. If one employs the strength of many people, there is nothing that cannot be overcome. Even Wu Huo 40 could not lift the weight of a thousand Jun, 41 but if many people work together as one, then a hundred men would have more than enough strength to lift it. Thus, if the ruler relies on the strength of just one man, then even that of Wu Huo would not be enough, if he relies on the knowledge of many people, then the world will not suffice to contain it. 42 9 slash 71 slash 22 26 9.17 You diverted the Yangtze and cleared the Yellow River in order to bring great benefit to the world, but he could not get the water to flow westward. Lord Millet extended arable land and reclaimed grasslands so the people could devote their strength to agriculture, but he could not get grain to grow in winter. Is it that the efforts of these men were inadequate? No the natural propensity of water and grain made it impossible. Now to advance a project that the natural propensity of things makes impossible, rather than to comply with the norms of the patterns of the way this is something that even a sage, however spirit-like, could not accomplish. How much more so would this be the case with any contemporary ruler? Now, if the load in the cart is heavy and the horses are weak, 
even Zeofa could not get them to go very far. If the cart is light and the horse is fine, even a middling workman could get it to go fast. Thus how can even sages, in carrying out affairs, oppose the norms of the patterns of the way or go against the constraints of nature, making the crooked straight and the bumpy smooth? The sage never fails to use things according to their natural qualities. Therefore, if you combine the strength of many to lift something, there is nothing in which you cannot succeed. If you collect the wisdom of many, there is nothing you cannot accomplish. You can make a deaf person chew sinews to soften them, but you cannot make him hear. You can make a mute tend the stables, but you cannot make him talk. Physical forms may have what is incomplete, abilities may have aspects that are limited. Thus a particular form belongs in a particular place, and a particular ability addresses a particular task. If one's strength surpasses his burden, lifting it will not be heavy, if one's ability is appropriate to the task, accomplishing it will not be difficult. When each matter small or large, long or short obtains what is appropriate to it, the world will be as one, and no one will have the means to surpass another. The sage makes use of people's various capacities, thus no talent is wasted. 9-72-1-10-9.18 The ruler of men values uprightness and esteems loyalty. When the loyal and the upright are in high positions and affairs are dealt with by cleaving to rectitude, flattering deceivers and wicked villains will have no place to advance. It can be compared to the way that the square and the circular cannot cover each other, and the crooked and the straight cannot fit inside each other. That birds and beasts do not gather in the same places because they belong to different species. That tigers and deer do not travel together is because their strength is unequal. Thus when a sage accomplishes his will and ascends the throne, the flattering deceivers and depraved villains who wish to oppose him become like a sparrow catching sight of a hawk or a rat encountering a fox. There certainly will not be much more life for them. Therefore, the ruler of men in every matter cannot fail to be careful. When those whom he employs are appropriate, then above, the country will be orderly, below, it will be harmonious. The officials will feel close to the ruler, the masses of the people will submit. When those employed are not appropriate, then the country will be in danger, superior and inferior will disagree, officials will be resentful, and the people will be disorderly. Thus if a matter is dealt with wrongly, to the end of his life the ruler will suffer. In gaining or losing the way, the power must lie with the ruler. Thus, if the line of the marking cord is straight above, the board will be straight below. There is no great affair involved. It is just a matter of following what has been laid out, and it will be so. 9-72-12-18 Thus, when the ruler is sincere and upright, honest officials will carry out their duties, and wicked men will go into hiding. When the ruler is not upright, evil men will achieve their goal, and loyal ones will hide themselves. Why is it that people do not break open jade and stones but do break open melons and gourds? It is because there is nothing to be gained by cutting open jade and stones, so we do not assault them. If the ruler holds fast to rectitude and exercises fairness, it will be as easy as using the marking cord and the level to mark a line from high to low. Even if officials bring in wicked practices, they will have as little effect as eggs thrown against stones or fire tossed into water. Thus, King Ling of Chu 43 admired narrow wastes, and the people cut down on their food and starved themselves. King Gujian of Yu 44 loved bravery, and people all put themselves in danger and bide at risking death. From this perspective, he who wields the handles of power and positional advantage finds it easy to modify habits and change customs. When Yao was only a commoner, he could not transform people through humaneness even for an area of only a li. When Ji ascended the throne, his commands were carried out, and what he forbade stopped. From this perspective, it is clear that worthiness is not sufficient to create order, but positional advantage can change customs. The documents says, when the one man i.e., the ruler encounters good fortune, the myriad people depend on it. 45 This is what is meant here. 
9 slash 72 slash 20, 25 9.19 in the world, many are confused by name and fame, and few investigate the real situation. Therefore hermits are venerated for their reputations, roving debaters are noted because of their persuasiveness. If we look into the reasons why they are venerated and noted, we will find it is due to nothing other than the fact that the ruler does not distinguish clearly between the grounds of benefit and harm and esteems the disputations of great masses of people. A well-governed country is not like this. Those who discuss policy must be looked into in accordance with the law, those who carry out official matters must be regulated by bureaucrats. Superiors uphold official titles and use them to evaluate actual performance, officials take care of their duties and carry out their work efficiently. Words are not permitted to exceed reality, actions are not permitted to overstep the law. The numerous officials come together like the spokes of a wheel, with no one daring to usurp the prerogatives of the ruler. If a matter does not lie within the scope of the law but can benefit the state or support its administration, then one must carry out procedures of threes and fives to make a covered investigation, in order to discern its outcome for the ruler. 46 He must also use the technique of listening on all sides to investigate its transformations, not leaning toward one viewpoint or favoring one side. Thus he stands at the center yet is omnipresent, spreading his light to all within the four seas, while the numerous officials are impartial and upright, none daring to do anything wicked. The hundred office holders transmit the details of their duties and strive to leave behind a meritorious legacy. When the ruler is the essence of enlightenment above, the officials exhort one another to work hard below. The traces of wickedness are thus extinguished, and many successes follow day after day. This is why brave men will give their utmost to the armed forces. In a disordered country, it is not thus. Those who are praised by the multitudes are richly rewarded though devoid of accomplishments. Those who stick to their duties are punished though free of guilt. The ruler above is in the dark and does not understand. Officials form factions and are disloyal. Persuasive talkers roam about engaging in debates. People who embellish their actions compete for offices. When the ruler above issues a law, such officials denounce it according to their respective factions. What the law prohibits, they transgress in their wickedness. Those who are taken to be wise devote themselves to artifice and deceit, those who are taken to be brave devote themselves to contention and struggle. High officials usurp authority, low functionaries seize positional advantage. Cliques and factions become widespread and toy with their superiors. Although the state seems to still exist, people of antiquity would have said, it has already fallen. Moreover, not to regulate official functions, not to take up shield and armor, not to cultivate the southern fields. Yet still to enjoy fame as a worthy or a sage that is not the way to promulgate one's teachings in a state. Kiji and Lua were the fastest horses in the world, but if charioteers had goaded them and they did not go, reined them in and they did not stop, then not even fools would have driven them. Now at the crux of chaos and order, 47 there are signs that can be observed, yet none of the rulers of our age can discern them. Their way of governing is obstructed. 9 slash 72 slash 27, 9 slash 73 slash 10 expediency and positional advantage are the ruler's carriage. 48 rank and emolument are the official's harness and bit. Thus the ruler institutes central control of expediency and positional advantage, wields the handles of rank and emoluments, surveys carefully the regulation of slowness and speed, and apportions what is given and taken. Thus all the world works hard but is not tired. Now the relationship between official and ruler is not as close as that between father and son or as intimate as that between bones and flesh i.e., blood relations. Nevertheless the official will use all his strength and even risk his life and will not reject his ruler's control. What? It is the ruler's use of positional advantage that makes the official behave like this. 
9 slash 73 slash 12 14 9.20 formerly Yu Rang 49 was an official of Viscount Wen of Zhonghang 50 when Earl Ji 51 attacked the Zhonghang clan and annexed its territory. Yu Rang turned against his ruler and served as an official for Earl Ji. Earl Ji and Viscount Xiang of Zhao 52 fought near Jinyang. Earl Ji was killed, and his country was divided into three. Yu Rang hoping to get revenge against Viscount Xiang of Zhao, lacquered his body to raise leprous sores, swallowed ashes to disguise his voice, and pulled out his teeth to change his looks. Can it be that with the heart of one man, he served two masters? In one case he turned against his master and left him, while in another case he sacrificed his life to follow him. Can it be that the positional advantage of following one master and abandoning the other was different? No the kindness and grace with which he was treated was what made it so. When the tyrant Zhao ruled the world, he assembled the lords of the land. Everywhere people used their feet to arrive and plied their oars to come through. No one failed to submit to him. Nevertheless, King Wu, with only 3,000 armored warriors, captured him at Mui. Can it be simply that the Zhou people were willing to die and the Yin Shang were rebellious? No because King Wu's moral potency and rightness were abundant, his commands were carried out. Now, when the wind is strong, the waves rise, when trees flourish, birds gather. Each engenders qi in the other. Thus, if the official does not get what he wants from the ruler, the ruler also cannot get what he wants from the official. What transpires between rulers and officials is due to the positional advantage of reciprocal obligations. Thus if the official gives all his efforts and is willing to risk his life for his ruler, the ruler will measure the official's accomplishments and issue ranks on that basis. Thus, the ruler cannot reward an official who has no accomplishments, an official also will not die for a ruler who lacks moral potency. If the ruler's moral potency does not flow down to the people but he still desires to make use of them, it is like beating a wild horse or like not waiting for the rain yet seeking the ripe grain, methods that are surely impossible. 9 slash 73 slash 16, 24 9.21 The way of the ruler is to abide in tranquility and thereby to cultivate the self, to practice economy and thereby lead those below. If he is tranquil, those below will not be disturbed. If he is frugal, the people will not be resentful. When those below are disturbed, government is disordered. When the people are resentful, the ruler's moral potency is wanting. When government is disordered, worthies will not offer proposals. When the ruler's moral potency is wanting, brave men will not die for him. Thus if the ruler is fond of fierce birds and wild animals, precious curiosities and exotic things, is violent and excitable, does not cherish the people's strength, goes riding and hunting at inappropriate times. Then the responsibilities of the hundred officials will be disordered, their affairs will be labored, and their resources will be exhausted. The populace will grow miserable and sorrowful, their means of livelihood will be neglected. If the ruler is fond of high terraces and deep pools, carved, polished, engraved, and figure gemstones, finely embroidered and artfully ornamented designs, fine and thick silks and linens, precious baubles of pearl and jade, then taxes will be unrestrained. And the people's strength will be exhausted. When Yao governed the world, he did not covet the wealth of the people, nor did he rest secure in the position of ruler. Perceiving that the people expended their strength and struggle, so that the strong mistreated the weak, and the many oppressed the few, therefore Yao practiced personal economy in his actions and made clear the humaneness of mutual love so as to harmonize and pacify the people. Therefore the thatching on his house was not trimmed, the beams and pillars were not carved. His state carriage was not decorated, his floor mats were not hemmed. His sacrificial broth was not seasoned, his grain was not hulled. He made tours of inspection and taught by example, he labored hard for the sake of the world, his influence spread throughout the five peaks. Could it be that the support he received was not sufficient for his enjoyment? 
He treated the whole world as his altar of grain i.e., as his state but did not seek personal gain from it. When he became old and his will grew weary, he abdicated in favor of Shun, as if stepping back to kick off his sandals. 53 It follows that an age in decline is not like this. Upon gaining the wealth of the world and the positional advantage of rulership, the ruler exhausts the strength of the people just to satisfy the desires of his eyes and ears. His will is preoccupied with palaces, pavilions, ponds, and gardens, wild animals, common bears and brown bears, amusing himself with fine objects and judging the merits of rarities. Thus, the impoverished people do not have even the dregs of grain from the brewery to eat, yet tigers, wolves, common bears and brown bears gorge themselves on fodder and meat. The people wear short garments of the coarsest cloth that do not even completely cover them, while those in the palaces wear brocade and embroidered gowns. The ruler is eager to carry out projects that are of no use, while the people look haggard and worn. All this makes the people of the world disquieted in their natures. 9 slash 73 slash 26 9 slash 74 slash 10 9.22 The ruler of men, by virtue of his position, is like the sun and moon in their brightness. The people of the world, as one, strain their eyes to look at him, strain their ears to hear him, crane their necks, and stand on tiptoe to gaze at him. For this reason, unless he is calm and indifferent, he will not be able to shine forth his moral potency. Unless he is still and tranquil, he will not be able to extend his rule to distant places. Unless he is lenient and great-hearted, he will not be able to bind together and cover the realm. Unless he is kind and generous, he will not be able to embrace the people. Unless he is fair and upright, he will not be able to render judgments. 9 slash 74 slash 12, 14 Thus the worthy ruler's employment of others is like a skillful artisan's management of wood. Large pieces are used for boats and barges or pillars and rafters, small ones are used for tholes and pegs. Long pieces are used for eaves and rafters, short pieces for red lacquered brackets and capitals. Whether small or large, long or short, each has something for which it is appropriate. The compass and the square shape them square or round, each has something for which it is suitable. They have different shapes and varying qualities, but there is nothing that does not find its proper use. Of all things in the world, none is more poisonous than the Zitu plant, 54 but an accomplished doctor puts it in his bag and keeps a supply of it, for it is useful in some treatments. Thus, if among the products of the forests and the thickets, there are none that may be ignored, how much more so is this the case with people? Now it may be that someone is not promoted at court and his fame is not celebrated in country songs, not because the person is unsatisfactory, but because the office he holds is not appropriate to his true abilities. When a deer ascends a mountain, a roebuck cannot follow. Yet when the deer descends again, even a shepherd boy can chase it. Natural talents have long suits and shortcomings. For this reason, someone with a talent for grand schemes cannot be entrusted with a task requiring nimbleness and cunning. Someone with petty wisdom cannot be given responsibility for a great project. People have abilities, material things have shapes. For some, taking responsibility for one thing is too burdensome, for others, taking responsibility for a hundred things seems light. Thus, one who can calculate things in minute detail would be lost dealing with large numbers on the scale of heaven and earth, someone who never misses in small calculations would become confused when dealing with grand affairs. Likewise, a fox cannot be used to attack an ox, tigers cannot be used to catch rats. People's talents are such that some wish to pacify the nine provinces, unite the lands beyond, preserve an endangered state, or revive an extinguished royal line. Their will is set on straightening the way and rectifying evil, resolving difficulties and ordering the disorderly. Yet they are charged with the minutiae of court ceremonies. Others are adept and clever, petty and backbiting. They advance through flattery, rely on persuasion, 
follow the vulgar customs of country lanes, and defile themselves before the ears and eyes of the masses. Yet they are entrusted with authority over the world, at the crux of order and disorder. This is like using an axe to split a hair or a knife to cut down a tree. 55 In each case it is inappropriate. 9 slash 74 slash 16, 28 The ruler of men uses the eyes of the world to see, the ears of the world to hear, the wisdom of the world to make plans, and the strength of the world to contend. Thus his orders and commands are able to penetrate to those below, and the true feelings of the ministers are known by the ruler above. The hundred offices are regulated and efficient, the numerous officials work together like spokes at the hub of a wheel. The personal pleasure of the ruler does not determine the granting of rewards, his personal anger does not determine the meeting out of punishments. Thus, his awesome dignity will be established and not be destroyed, his comprehensive illumination will shine and not be obscured, his laws and commands will be clear and precise and will not be considered harsh, his ears and eyes will penetrate everywhere and will not be blocked. The dispositions of good and bad will be laid out before him daily, and there will be nothing to which he is opposed. Thus worthies will use their wisdom to the utmost, and the untalented will use all their strength to serve him. His moral potency and grace will cover the world impartially, the many officials will work hard to fulfill their duties and will not be indolent. The near at hand will find security in the ruler's nature, the far off will respond to his moral potency. Why is this so? It is because the ruler has attained the way of making use of people and does not rely merely on his own qualities. Thus, those who travel with chariots and horses do not wear out their legs but can go more than a thousand li. Those who rely on boats and oars need not know how to swim but can cross the rivers and seas. 9 slash 75 slash 1, 6 now, of those who have the feelings of a ruler of men, there is none who does not want to gather unto himself all the wisdom in the world and use to the fullest extent the strength of the masses. Yet making known their intentions to act with exemplary loyalty, the numerous officials rarely escape putting themselves in danger. If someone offers a proposal and it is correct, even if it is from a brushwood gatherer in coarse clothing, it should not be rejected. If someone offers a proposal and it is incorrect, even if it comes from the chief minister or the ruler himself and is extolled in writing in the ancestral hall, it should not necessarily be implemented. When deciding where truth or falsity lies, wealth and poverty, honors, or meanness, may not be discussed. When an enlightened ruler listens to his ministers, if their proposals are such as can be used, he will not feel ashamed of the low rank of the proposer. If their words are such as can be put into action, he will not criticize their rhetorical style. A benighted ruler is not like this. Even if his favorites and intimates are wicked and dishonest, he will not be capable of seeing it. Even if those far away from him and in low positions exert all their strength and show the utmost loyalty, he will not be capable of knowing it. Those who speak forthrightly are beaten down by the ruler's own words. Those who loyally admonish are punished as if guilty of crimes. A ruler who acts in this way yet still wants to shine his light throughout the world and preserve the myriad districts of the realm is like someone who blocks his ears and tries to distinguish high from low tones or who covers his eyes and tries to distinguish between blue and yellow. That is a long way from enjoying sharp hearing and keen eyesight. 9 slash 75 slash 8, 14. 9.23 law is the standard of measurement for the world, the level, and the marking cord of the ruler. He who proclaims the laws does so to impose law on the lawless, he who sets up rewards does so to reward those who deserve rewards. After the laws are set, those who obey the laws are rewarded, and those who fall short of the marking cord S line are punished. For the honorable and noble, the punishments are not decreased, and for the lowly and base, the punishments are not increased. If someone disobeys the law, even if he is otherwise worthy, he must be punished. If someone meets the standard, even if he is otherwise unworthy, he must be found innocent. Thus the way of the public good will be opened up, and that of private interest will be blocked. In ancient times, 
a system of responsible officials was established so as to restrain the people and thus prevent them from doing just as they pleased. The position of ruler was set up to control the officials so that they could not carry out policy on their own. Laws, records, propriety, and rightness were used to restrain the ruler so that he could not exercise absolute authority. When none of the people could blindly follow their own desires, the way was triumphant. When the way was triumphant, patterns were apparent. Thus government returned to non-action. Non-action does not mean that the ruler froze and was inert but that nothing any longer emanated from the ruler personally. 9 slash 75 slash 16, 21 Now the inch comes from the millet grain, the millet grain comes from physical forms. Physical forms come from shadows, shadows come from the sun. This is the root of standards of measurement. 56 Music comes from the pentatonic notes, the notes come from the pitch pipe tones, and the pitch pipe tones come from the wind. This is the ancestry of sound. 57 Law comes from rightness. Rightness comes from what is appropriate for the people. What is appropriate for the people accords with the human heart. This is the sign qua non of government. Thus, those who penetrate to the root are not confused about the branches. Those who see the fundamental are not confused about the details. Law is not a gift of heaven, not a product of earth. It was devised by humankind but conversely is used by humans to rectify themselves. Thus, what you have in yourself you must not criticize in others, what you lack in yourself you must not seek in others, what is established for inferiors must not be disregarded by superiors, what is prohibited to the people must not be practiced by the ruler himself. A country that can be said to be lost is not one without a ruler but one without laws. To twist 58 the law does not mean to have no laws at all but, rather, that the laws are not employed. That is equivalent to not having laws. Thus when the ruler first establishes laws, he begins by making himself an example and a standard, thus the laws are implemented in the world. Confucius said, if the ruler himself is upright, even though he does not issue orders, they are carried out, if he is not upright, though he issue orders, they are not followed. 59 Thus when the prohibitions apply to even the ruler himself, then his orders will be carried out among the people. 9 slash 75 slash 23 39.24 The sage ruler's conduct of government is like Zeofo's charioteering. 60 He smooths the ride by controlling the reins and bit and regulates the speed by harmonizing with the horse's lips and breathing. Having the correct standard within his own breast, he exercises control with the whip in his hands. Inwardly he draws on what is within his heart, externally he accords with the horse's will. Thus he is able to advance and retreat in a line as straight as if laid out with a marking cord and to turn circles as round as if drawn with a compass. He selects a route that will take him far away and still has energy, chi, and strength left over. He can do this because he has sincerely mastered the necessary technique. Thus, the exercise of authority and positional advantage is the ruler's chariot chassis, and the high-ranking ministers are the ruler's team of horses. For the body to leave the safety of the chariot chassis and the hands to lose their responsiveness to the team of horses' intentions and yet still be able to avoid danger is something that has never been accomplished from ancient times to the present. Thus if the chariot and the horses are not coordinated, even the master charioteer Wang Liang would not be able to choose a route. If the ruler and his ministers are not in harmony, even Tang and Yue, Yao and Shun would not have the ability to govern. If the ruler uses the proper technique to drive them, even the wisdom of Guangzhou 61 and Yan Ying would be employed to the fullest. If the ruler illuminates distinctions to control them, even the wickedness of men like Robert Ji 62 and Zhuang Jiao 63 could be stopped. 9 slash 76 slash 1, 6 If you lean over the railing and peer into the bottom of a well, even if you have superior eyesight, you could not see the reflection of your own eyes pupil. But if you look at your reflection in a mirror, you can see it in only a one inch portion of the mirror. Thus an enlightened ruler's eyes and ears are not worn out, his essence and spirit are not exhausted. 
when things come into view, he looks at their appearance, when events transpire, he responds to their transformations. When what is near at hand is not in disorder, then what is far away will be ordered. Thus, he does not use haphazard methods but carries out the unalterable way. Thus of his myriad undertakings, none fails to go according to plan. 9-76-8-11 Now if the horses are matched to the chassis and the driver's heart is in harmony with the horses, a charioteer can travel perilous roads and go for long distances, advancing and retreating and turning circles, with nothing failing to accord with his will. But if even steeds as fine as Kiji and Lua were given to female bond servants to drive, they would revert to their own intractable ways, and the servants could not control them. Thus the ruler does not prize people being the way he wants them of their own accord but prizes there being no chance for them to go wrong. Thus it is said, do not make it possible for people to have desires, then you need not tell them not to seek things. Do not make it possible for people to grab things, then you need not tell them not to struggle. In this way, individual talents are set aside and the way of public service will be carried out. Those who have ample talent will be restrained by appropriate measures, while those whose abilities fall short will be used for something. Thus all within the seas can be made as one. 9 76 13 17 Now if a ruler ignores the relationship between position and duties and listens to undeserved reputations, rejects those who work for the public good, and employs people according to friendship and factions. Then those of bizarre talents and frivolous ability will be promoted out of turn, while conscientious officials will be hindered and will not advance. In this way, the customs of the people will fall into disorder throughout the state, and accomplished officials will have to struggle at court. Thus laws, regulations, standards, and measures are the means by which the ruler controls his subordinates. If he ignores them and does not use them, it is like trying to drive a horse without reins and bit. The numerous officials and the common people alike manipulate the ruler instead. Thus, with technique, one rules others, without technique, one is ruled by them. 9 76 19 21 9.25 If a fish large enough to swallow a boat leaps out of the water, it will be overcome by crickets and ants because it has left its dwelling place. If an ape or a monkey leaves its tree, it will be caught by a fox or raccoon dog because it is out of its proper place. If the ruler of men ignores what he should preserve and struggles with his ministers and subordinates about the conduct of affairs, then those with official posts will be preoccupied with holding on to their positions. And those charged with official duties will avoid dismissal by following the whims of the ruler. This will cause capable ministers to conceal their wisdom and not put it to use, and so their responsibilities will instead shift back to the ruler. 9 76 22, 24 Now what makes the wealthy and noble work hard, the adept at management examine things judiciously, and the proud and unruly be respectful is the fact that their positional advantage does not equal that of the ruler. If the ruler does not rely on capable people but wants to do everything himself, then his wisdom will be taxed daily, and he will be burdened with responsibilities. If the ruler is frequently exhausted by attending to lesser duties, he will not be able to make broadly known the proper patterns. Proper conduct will deteriorate throughout the state, and he will no longer be able to exert exclusive control. His knowledge by itself will be insufficient to govern, and his majesty will be insufficient to impose punishments. Thus he will lack what it takes to deal with the world. If joy and anger form in the ruler's heart and desires manifest themselves in his outward appearance, those charged with official duties will abandon what is proper and pander to the ruler, while those who hold office will distort the law and follow the prevailing wind. Rewards will no longer match accomplishments, punishments will no longer correspond to crimes. The hearts of superiors and subordinates will part ways, ruler and ministers will resent each other. Thus, when those who hold the reins of government pander to their superiors and commit errors, there will be no way to hold them accountable. When those who commit crimes are not punished, the numerous officials will lapse into turmoil and disorder, and wisdom will not be able to resolve the situation. 
baseless slander and unwarranted praise will sprout forth, and enlightenment will not be able to clarify the situation. If he does not rectify the root by returning to the natural, then the ruler will be taxed even more, and his ministers will become even less restrained. It would be like skinning an animal yourself instead of letting a master cook do it or trying to carve wood for a master carpenter. If a man were to race a horse on foot, even though he tore his tendons in the effort, he would not catch up, but if he mounted a chariot and took the reins, the horse would be responsive to its bit. Thus if Bo Ali selects the steeds and Wang Liang drives them, an enlightened ruler can ride without the trouble of selecting horses or driving and can undertake a journey of a thousand li. He is carried by the capabilities of others as if they were his feathers and wings. 9-76-26-9-77-5 Thus the ruler of men practices non-action, he has a basis for what he does but is devoid of personal preferences. If he practiced action, slander would arise. If he had personal preferences, flattery would come forth. In ancient times, Duke Huan of Qi was fond of exotic flavors, so Yi Ya 64 boiled his eldest son to entice him. The ruler of Yu was fond of treasures, so Jin used jade discs and fine horses to lure him. The king of the Hu tribes loved music, so Duke Mu of Qin 65 used female musicians to seduce him. In all these cases, 66 because some benefit was presented to them, they fell under the control of others. Thus, what is planted well cannot be uprooted, 67 what is established by mere words has no physical form. Now, fire is hot but water extinguishes it. Metal is hard but fire melts it. Wood is strong but axes cut it, water flows but earth blocks it. Only what fashions and transforms us cannot be overcome by things. Thus, not letting inner desires emerge is called barring the door, not letting external depravity enter is called blocking the gate. If what is inside is locked in and what is outside is blocked out, what matter would not be properly regulated? If what is outside is blocked out and what is inside is locked in, what matter would not be successful? Only if you do not use something now can you use it later, only if you do not act now can you act later. If the essence and spirit are overworked, they become dispersed, if the ears and eyes are employed excessively, they become exhausted. Thus a ruler who has the way extinguishes planning and discards intent. Quiet and empty, he waits. He does not speak for the officials, he does not do their jobs. According to their job titles, they are assigned responsibilities, as their offices are employed, they discharge their duties. They have responsibilities without written instructions, duties without formal teaching, he takes I don't know as the way, and how is it done? As a treasure. In this way, someone is responsible for each of the affairs handled by the numerous officials. 9 slash 77 slash 7, 15 9.26 Holding onto the handles of authority and positional advantage makes it easy to transform the people. That the ruler 68 of Wei took into service Confucius's disciple Zilu was because the ruler's authority was heavy. That Dukes Jing 69 and Huan of Qi made ministers of Guangzhou and Yan Ying was because the ruler's positions were exalted. That sometimes the timid can subdue the brave and the unintelligent can control the wise is because they can use positional advantage successfully. Now, the limbs of a tree cannot be larger than its trunk, the stem cannot be stronger than the root. So it is said that light and heavy, large and small, have that by which they mutually control each other. It is like the way the five fingers are attached to the arm. They can grasp, extend, snatch or grab, and none happens other than as we wish it. This is to say, the small are appendages of the large. Thus to have the benefit of positional advantage means that what you hold is very small but what you manage is very large, what you guard is very compact, but what you control is vast. Thus a tree trunk ten hand spans in circumference can support a roof weighing a thousand june, and a key five inches long can control the opening and closing of a door. How can this small amount of material be sufficient for the task? The position they occupy is the important thing. 
Confucius and Ammo de cultivated the techniques of the former sages and had a penetrating understanding of the theories of the six arts. Their utterances adhered to their doctrines, and their personal actions embodied their will. Yet those who, admiring their rightness and following their influence, submitted to them and served them did not amount to more than a few tens of individuals. But if they had occupied the position of Son of Heaven, everyone in the world would have become Confucians or Mahists. King Zhuang of Chu 70 was distressed because when Wuvai was killed in the state of Song. 71 he pushed up his sleeves in anger and arose to invade Song. Officials in robes and caps fell in with him at every stage along the road so that at last they formed a whole army beneath the walls of Song. His grasp of the handles of authority was waving. King Wen of Chu 72 liked to wear a cap of Siefer, 73 and the people of Chu imitated him. King Wuling of Zhao 74 attended court wearing a belt decorated with shells and a cap plumed with pheasant feathers, and the entire state of Zhao transformed their dress along with him. Yet if an ordinary person were to go to court wearing a siefer hat, a belt of shells, and a cap plumed with pheasant feathers, he could not avoid being laughed at by others. 9 77 17 26 There is not one in 10,000 among the common people who loves goodness, rejoices in uprightness, and, without waiting to hear what is forbidden or punishable, naturally stays within the scope of the laws and standards. But if the ruler hands down commands that must be followed, so that those who obey them benefit and those who disobey them suffer, then before the sun dial's shadow has moved, no one within the four seas will fail to toe the line. Thus, grasping a sword or a glaive by the blade and advancing to fight not even Beigongza 75 or Sima Kwekui 76 could be used to respond to an enemy attack in that manner. But if he were to grasp the hilt and raise the tip of the blade, then even an ordinary person might prevail. If even Wu Huo or Ji Fan 77 were to pull on an ox's tail from behind, even though the tail might break off, still the ox would not go where they wanted it to because that would be working against its natural propensities. But if you put a mulberry stick through the ox's nose, even a five-foot-tall child could lead it anywhere within the four seas, because that would be complying with its natural propensities. With a seven foot or you can steer a boat to the right or to the left because it uses the water itself to assist it. The Son of Heaven issues commands. His orders are implemented and his prohibitions observed because he uses the people themselves as his positional advantage. 9 slash 77 slash 28, 9 slash 78 slash 4 If the ruler defends the people against what does them harm and opens a way for the people to have what brings them benefit, then his awesomeness will spread like the bursting of a dike or the breaking of a dam. Thus if you follow the current and head downstream, it is easy to reach your goal, if you gallop with your back to the wind, it is easy to go far. When Duke Huan of Qi set up his government, he got rid of meat-eating animals, got rid of grain-eating birds, and took down snares and nets. With these three undertakings, he pleased the common people. When Tyrant Zhao murdered his uncle, Prince Baigan, 78 his blood relative 79 grew resentful. When he cut off the legs of people who were crossing the river in the early morning, tens of thousands of people rebelled. With these two undertakings, he lost the world. Now, a ruler's rightness cannot be relied on to benefit everyone in the world, but if it benefits one person, the world will follow his example. A ruler's cruelty might not be enough to harm everyone in the world, but if it harms one person, the whole world might rise in rebellion. Thus, Duke Huan made three undertakings and subsequently presided over nine gatherings of the lords of the land. Zhao performed two undertakings, and subsequently he could not live even as a commoner. Thus one cannot but be careful of one's actions. 9-78-6 10.9.27 When the ruler levies taxes on the people, he must first calculate what the harvest will bring in, weigh what the people have in storage, and find out, in anticipation of abundance or dearth, the numbers of people who have a surplus or a shortage. Only after this should he use tax revenues to pay for chariots, carriages, clothing, and food to satisfy his desires. 
high terraces and multi-story pavilions, serried rooms, and linked chambers it is not that they are not elegant, but when the people do not even have hollowed out caves or wattle huts in which to shelter themselves, an enlightened ruler does not enjoy them. Rich food, strong wines, and sweet pastries it is not that they are not good, but when not even husks of the grain or beans and peas make it to the mouths of the people, then the enlightened ruler does not find such delicacies sweet. A well-made bed and finely woven mats it is not that these are not restful, but when the people live in frontier walled towns, braving danger and hardship, dying in the meadowlands leaving sun-bleached bones, an enlightened ruler does not lie peacefully in his fine bed. Thus those who ruled over humanity in antiquity felt such sorrowful despondency eighty for the troubles of the people that if some went hungry in the state, his food would not be heavily seasoned, if some people were cold, in winter he would not wear furs. When the harvest was abundant and the people prosperous, only then would the ruler set up the bells and drums and display the shields and axes used in ceremonial dances. Ruler and ministers, superiors and subordinates, then with one mind took pleasure in them, so that there was not a single sorrowful person in the state. 9-78-10-17 Thus people in ancient times created instruments of metal, stone, bamboo, and strings to express their joy, 81 weapons, armor, axes, and halberds to display their anger, wine cups and libations, sacrificial meat stands and platters, pledges and toasts. To verify their happiness, unbleached morning garments and straw sandals, breast beating and gyrating, crying and weeping, to communicate sorrow. These all are cases of things that swell up internally and then become manifest externally. But coming down to the times of disorderly rulers, in taking from the people, they did not calculate their strength, in seeking taxes from those below, they did not measure their savings. Men and women were not able to pursue their callings of farming and weaving because they had to supply the demands of their superiors. Their strength was exhausted and their resources were depleted. Rulers and ministers despised one another. Thus if just when the people reached the point that, with parched lips and agitated livers, they had only enough for the moment with nothing put aside, the rulers began to have the great bells struck, the drums beaten, the reed pipes played, and the chin and se plucked. It would have been just like descendants donning armor to enter the ancestral temple or wearing silk gauze to go on a military campaign. One could say that they had lost sight of that from whence joy in music arises. 9-78-19-24 Now as people pursue their livelihoods, if a single man follows the plow, he can till no more than ten mu of land. The yearly harvest from fields of middling quality would not exceed four dan per mu. His wife and children and the elderly and infirm must also rely on this. Sometimes there are diverse calamities such as floods, droughts, and natural disasters. He also has to pay the taxes to the ruler for the expenses of chariots and horses and soldiers and armor. From this point of view, the life of commoners is pitiful indeed. Now over the great expanse of heaven and earth, on average a three-year period of farming should produce a surplus of one year's grain. Thus roughly over nine years, there should be three years savings, six years accumulation in 18 years, and nine years reserve in 27 years. Even if there were floods, droughts, or natural disasters, none of the people would become distressed and impoverished and be left to wander about in utter destitution. Thus if the state does not have a reserve of nine years production, it is called insufficient. Without six years accumulation, it is called pitiful. Without three years surplus, it is called impoverished. Thus humane princes and enlightened rulers are restrained in what they take from those below, they are measured in supporting themselves. As a result, the people can receive the bounty of heaven and earth and not encounter the difficulties of hunger and cold. But if there are greedy rulers and violent princes, they vex those below, plundering and confiscating goods from the people to gratify their insatiable desires. Consequently, the people have no means to avail themselves of heaven's harmony or tread the path of earth's bounty. 9-78-26, 
9 slash 79 slash 69.28 food is the root of the people, the people are the root of the state, the state is the root of the ruler. For this reason, the ruler of men above, follows the seasons of heaven, below, relies on the resources of earth, and in their midst, uses the strength of the people. Thus living things grow to maturity, the five grains flourish abundantly. The ruler is responsible for teaching the people how to nourish and care for the six kinds of domestic animals, plant trees in the proper season, work at laying out paddy fields and open fields, start seedlings of and plant mulberry trees and hemp. According to whether the soil is fertile or infertile, high or low, they sow each place with what suits it. In hilly and precipitous places where the five grains will not sprout, they plant trees and bamboo. In spring they prune the dry branches. In summer they take fruits and melons. In autumn they gather vegetables and grains. In winter they cut firewood. All these are resources for the people. Thus while alive, they have no lack of things to use, and when dead, their corpses are not abandoned. Thus by the laws of the former kings, when hunting they did not wipe out herds, they did not catch fawns or baby animals, they did not drain marshes to get fish, they did not burn forests to capture animals. In the ninth month, 82 before doles had offered their sacrifices, the nets for catching animals were not spread out in the wild. In early spring before otters had sacrificed fish, 83 the fish nets were not put in the water because the fish were too small. At the beginning of autumn when the eagles and falcons had not yet been used to seize other birds, Nets for catching birds were not placed in valleys and gorges. In the ninth month before the leaves had fallen, axes were not brought into the mountains and forests. In the tenth month before the insects had gone into hibernation, the fields were not burned off. Pregnant animals were not killed, fledgling birds and eggs were not taken. Fish that were not at least a foot long were not caught, pigs that were not at least a year old were not eaten. Thus grasses and trees grew like steam rising into the air, and birds and beasts returned to their habitats like the flowing of a spring. Flying birds ascended to the sky like smoke or clouds. This was all because the conditions were right for them. 9 slash 79 slash 8, 16 thus, according to the administrative policies of the former kings, when the clouds from the four seas gathered at the beginning of spring, the field boundaries were repaired. When frogs and toads called and the swallows descended and arrived in the third month, the roads were opened and byways cleared. When Yin Chi descended to the hundred springs in the tenth month, the bridges were repaired. When the lunar lodge extension culminated at dusk in the third month, various grains were industriously planted. When the star great fire and terries culminated at dusk in the fourth month, millet and beans were sown. When the lunar lodge emptiness culminated at dusk in the eighth month, winter wheat was planted. When the lunar lodge Pleiades culminated at dusk in the twelfth month, reserves of grain were stored, and firewood was cut. 84 The ruler reported upward to heaven, and he made pronouncements downward to the people. The reason that the former kings in those ways responded to the seasons and put all in order, strengthened the state and benefited the people, and populated the wilds and attracted settlers from distant lands, was because their way was complete. It was not that they were able to see with their own eyes and personally went on foot to investigate. They wanted to benefit the people. Their wanting to benefit the people was never neglected in their own hearts, so the officials naturally were conscientious. The heart is incapable of accomplishing even one of the tasks of the nine apertures and the four limbs of the body, but in moving, Resting, hearing, and seeing, all take the heart as their master because it never forgets to benefit them. 9 slash 79 slash 18, 22 Thus Yao did good, and much additional goodness came about because of it. The tyrant Ji did wrong, and much additional evil came about because of it. When goodness accumulates, success is reached, when wrong accumulates, failures proliferate. 9 slash 79 slash 24, 25 9.29 Generally people say that you want your heart to be small cautious and your will to be large expansive, your wisdom to be round full and your conduct square proper, 
your abilities to be many and your affairs few. The heart should be cautious means that you should consider difficulties before they arise, prepare for calamities before they occur, guard against transgressions and be careful about small matters, and not dare to give rein to your desires. The will should be expansive means that you should bring together and embrace the myriad states, unify and standardize diverse customs, ally and shelter the commoners as if uniting them as a single people and act as the hub when opinions about right and wrong converge like the spokes of a wheel. Wisdom should be round means that you turn like a circle with no distinction between beginning and end, and flow to the four directions like a deep and inexhaustible spring. When the myriad things arise together, there is nothing to which you fail to turn your attention and respond. Conduct should be square means that you should be straight and unswerving, pure and uncorrupted. Even if you are destitute, you never change your patterns, and when successful, you never force your will on others. Abilities should be many means that you must be competent in both civil and military matters, and adhere to proper deportment both in movement and at rest. In your actions, in promoting and demoting, you always do what is appropriate. You meet with no opposition, and so nothing is incomplete or inappropriate. Affairs should be few means that you grasp the handles and wield the techniques of governance, get what is important so as to respond to the multitudes, grasp the essence so as to govern widely, dwell in quietude and stay centered, revolve at the pivot. And use the one to bring together the myriads, like bringing together the two halves of a tally. Thus, if your heart is cautious, you can put a stop to problems in their incipient stages. If your will is great, there will be nothing you do not embrace. If your knowledge is round, there will be nothing you do not know. If your conduct is square, you will not act in certain instances. If your abilities are many, there will be nothing you cannot put in order. If your affairs are few, the essence will be what you grasp. 9-79-27 9-80-7 In ancient times when the Son of Heaven held court, he arranged for lords and ministers to present forthright admonitions, scholars of wide learning to chant the odes, 85 music masters to sing critiques of government, and the populace to offer their opinions. Secretaries recorded the ruler's misconduct, chefs cut down on his delicacies. But still this was not considered sufficient, so Ya put in place a drum at the palace gate for anyone wishing to admonish him, Shun set up a board on which to post criticisms, Tang had a superintendent of rectitude, King Wu set up a small drum to remind him to be careful. Thus, when mistakes were still trivial, there already were precautions taken against them. According to the sage's concept of goodness, no act of goodness is so small that it should not be carried out. According to his concept of misconduct, no act of misconduct is so trivial that it should not be corrected. Yao, Shun, Yu, Tang, King Wen and King Wu confidently faced south and ruled the world. In those times, when a gong was struck, they ate, when the musical composition Concord 86 was played, the table was cleared. After finishing their rice, they offered a sacrifice to the stove god. In their conduct, they did not make use of shaman's invocations. Ghosts and spirits did not dare to work black magic on them, mountains and rivers did not dare to harm them. They could be said to be truly noble. Yet they were preoccupied and fearful, daily more and more careful. From this point of view, then, the sage's heart is cautious. The Odes says, indeed this King Wen was cautious and reverent, illustriously he served the high god, thus securing good fortune. 87 Is this not what is referred to here? When King Wu of Zhou attacked the Shang dynasty, he dispersed the grain from the Zuqiao granaries, distributed the money from the Lutai treasury, built a mound over Baigan's tomb, designated as exemplary the ancestral village of Shang Rong. 88 Brought under royal control the ancestral temple of Chen Tang, and freed Gzi from prison. 89 He let people of all sorts remain in their own homes and till their own fields. He did not distinguish between old and new friends but drew near only to those who were worthy. He made use of those who had not previously served him and employed those who were not previously his own men, 
comfortably treating the newcomers as if they had long been in his employ. From this point of view, then, the sage's will is expansive. King Wen of Zhou comprehensively surveyed successes and failures and everywhere investigated right and wrong. He considered what made Yao and Shan glorious and Yi Ji and Zhao perished, then recorded all his findings in the Mintang. Thereby he increased his wisdom and expanded his erudition so he could respond to anything that departed from the four square. From this point of view, then, the sage's wisdom is round. King Chen and King Kong carried on the task of Kings Wen and Wu, preserved the institution of the Ming Tang, looked into the traces of ancient states that endured or perished, and observed the alterations of success and failure. If something contravened the way, they would not say it, contravened rightness, they would not do it. Their words were not spoken heedlessly, their actions were not carried out heedlessly. They selected what was good, and only then would they pursue a course of action. From this point of view, then, the conduct of the superior man is square. Confucius's penetrating qualities were such that in wisdom he surpassed Chang Hong, 90 in bravery he was superior to Meng Ben. 91 his feet were quicker than an agile rabbit, his strength could lift a city gate. His abilities certainly were many. Nevertheless, his bravery and strength were not heard about, his skills and mastery were not known. It was only through carrying out filial piety and the way that he became an uncrowned king. His affairs certainly were few. In the 242 years of the spring and autumn period, 52 states perished and 36 rulers were assassinated. Confucius upheld goodness and condemned wickedness, thereby perfecting the way of the true king. His discussions certainly were broad. Nevertheless, when he was besieged in Kuang, his expression and complexion did not alter. He plucked his chin and sang without pausing. When it came to the point that his life was in danger, when he encountered calamities and dangerous difficulties, he clung to rightness and practiced his principles, and his will was fearless. His sense of discrimination between life and death certainly was clear. Thus, in serving as Minister of Justice in Lu, when he heard cases, he invariably came to a decision. In compiling the spring and autumn annals, he did not give accounts of ghosts and spirits, nor did he dare to inject his personal opinions. Now the wisdom of sages certainly embraces many things, what they preserve gets to the essence. Thus when they take some action, the outcome is invariably glorious. The wisdom of a foolish person certainly is very little, yet the things he tries to do are numerous. Thus when he acts on something it is certain to fail. In wisdom, Wu Qi 92 and Zhang Yi 93 did not compare with Confucius and Mo Di, yet they contended with rulers of 10,000 chariot states. This is why they eventually had their bodies torn apart by chariots and their lineage wiped out. 94 Now if the ruler uses uprightness to transform the people by teaching, that is easy and he will certainly succeed. If he uses depravity to manipulate society, that is difficult and he will certainly fail. Now, if you are going to establish a pattern of conduct and make it general throughout the world, to abandon the easy route that is sure to succeed and to follow the difficult way that is bound to fail would be the height of stupidity and confusion. The six opposites must, without fail, be scrutinized carefully. 9 slash 80 slash 99 slash 81 slash 49.30 to be thoroughly knowledgeable about the 10,000 things yet not to know about the way of humankind this cannot be called wisdom. To be thoroughly loving toward all sorts of living things yet not love humankind this cannot be called humaneness. Humaneness is the love of one's own kind. Wisdom means one cannot be confused. A humane person may be in the midst of witnessing a mutilating punishment or an execution, but it is evident from his countenance that he cannot bear to do so. A wise person may be in the midst of dealing with a vexing and challenging matter, but it is evident from his efficacy that he is not in the dark. His inner sense of reciprocity is reflected in his outward feelings. What he does not wish for himself he does not do to others. 95 From knowing the near, he knows the distant, from knowing himself, he knows others.
That is how the sage acts on the concord of humaneness 96 and wisdom. If in small matters there is teaching, then in great matters there is preservation of the state. If in small matters there are punishments, then in great matters there is peace. How compassion is to be expressed in action is a matter for the man of wisdom alone to decide. Thus humaneness and wisdom sometimes disagree and sometimes agree. When they agree, the ruler employs uprightness, when they disagree, he employs expediency. The standard of rightness is the same. 9-81-6, 11 functionaries and secretaries adhere to the law, but the ruler controls them through rightness. A ruler who is lawful but lacks rightness is no different from the functionaries and secretaries, this is not sufficient for true government. Farming as an occupation is laborious, weaving as an occupation is burdensome. Though they are laborious and burdensome, the people do not abandon them because they know that it is through those means that they can clothe and feed themselves. It is an essential quality of human beings that they cannot do without clothing and food. The way of clothing and feeding oneself must begin with farming and weaving. This is something that the people in their tens of thousands all recognize. Things like farming and weaving begin with hard work, but in the end they are inevitably beneficial. Things for which preparations can be made in advance are innumerable, but the number of preparations actually undertaken by the foolish are few. Matters in which expedient measures may be applied are many, but those in which expedient measures are actually undertaken by the foolish are few. This is why foolish people have so many troubles. Things for which one can prepare, the wise prepare for as completely as possible. Things to which expedient measures can be applied, they apply them as completely as possible. This is why the wise have so few troubles. Thus, the wise first meet with resistance but later bring about concord, the foolish begin in joy and end in grief. 9-81-13, 18 today, what should we do to win honors? Tomorrow, what should we do to accord with rightness? All this is easy to say. Today, what should we do to accord with rightness? Tomorrow, what should we do to win honors? This is hard to know. If you ask a blind musician, what is plain white like? He will say, it is like unbleached silk. If you ask him, what is black like? He will say, it is like deepest black. 97 If you take something white and something black and show them to him, however, he will not be able to distinguish between them. People use their eyes to perceive white and black and their mouths to speak of white and black. The blind music master has the means to speak of white and black but not the means to know white and black. Thus in speaking of white and black, he is the same as other people, but in not being able to distinguish them, he is different from other people. Everyone, whether foolish or wise, worthy or deficient, knows that internalizing filial piety toward his parents and outwardly displaying loyalty to his ruler is rightness. But few can set an example of loyal and filial conduct or know whence those qualities arise. Now as to people's thoughts, there is no one who does not first consider his opinion correct and then act on it. What distinguishes whether their conduct is correct or incorrect is the difference between foolishness and wisdom. 98-9-81-2025 In human nature nothing is more valuable than humaneness, nothing is more urgently needed than wisdom. Humaneness is used as the basic stuff, wisdom 99 is used to carry things out. These two are the root. Add to them bravery, strength, eloquence, mental acuity, cleverness, quickness, diligence, discrimination, ingenuity, mental agility, sharpness, keenness, thoroughgoing brilliance, and penetrating insight, and they all would serve to increase a person's advantages. But if someone who is personally lacking in self-cultivation is trained in skills and arts but has no humaneness or wisdom that he can manifest as his fundamental character, then the more he augments his strong points, the more it will add to the damage he can do. Thus, someone who lacks humaneness but is brave and daring is like a madman brandishing a sharp sword. Someone who lacks wisdom but is eloquent and quick-tongued is like driving a fine horse but not knowing which way to go. 100 Even though you may have talent and ability, 
if you apply it where it is not suitable, it will suffice only to promote deception and cover up wrongdoing. In that case having many skills would be not as good as having few. Thus those who are consumed with ambition cannot be given access to positional advantage, and those who are basically foolish cannot be given a sharp tool. 1019-81-27-9-82-29.31 When fish have water, they swim in it and enjoy themselves, but if the dikes break and the water dries up, then they will be eaten by insects. If you strengthen and repair the dikes and embankments and replace the water that leaked out, the fish will be restored and benefit from it. A country has something by means of which it is preserved, people have something by means of which they stay alive. What preserves a state is humaneness and rightness, what keeps people alive is good conduct. If a state lacks rightness, even if it is large, it will certainly perish. If people lack goodness of will, even if they are brave, they will be injured. The government of a state is by the fiat of the ruler and no one else. Being filial to parents, brotherly to siblings, and honest with friends all can be accomplished without commands from above. To put aside what you can accomplish and seek to do what you cannot control is absurd. 9-82-4-79.32 If a scholar living in low and obscure circumstances wants to gain access to the ruler, he must first revert to himself. There is a way to gain access to the ruler. But if you lack fame and reputation, you cannot gain access. There is a way to gain a reputation. But if you do not gain the trust of your friends, you cannot gain a reputation. There is a way to gain the trust of your friends. But if in your dealings with relatives you do not make them happy, your friends will not trust you. There is a way to make your relatives happy. But if your self-cultivation does not lead to sincerity, you cannot manage your family. There is a way to make yourself sincere. But if your mind is not focused on the one, you cannot be sincere. The way lies in what is easy, but people seek it in what is hard. The proof lies in what is near, but people seek it in the far away. That is why no one gets it. 9-82-7, 11.